Well, guys, this is Mubeen. We're talking about cardiovascular system, hemodynamics. The lecture today is Pausier's equation. Let's look at that equation here. The Pausier's equation says resistance equals 8, the product of 8 viscosity, this N is viscosity, length divided by pi and radius raised to power 4. That is the value. Once you calculate that, you get the value of the resistance. So the question is, what is the use of that resistance? Knowing the total peripheral resistance or knowing the resistance of a tube will then allow you to plug that, that value into flow or pressure equations. So if we apply it, for example, to a flow equation, flow equals delta P or pressure gradient divided by resistance. What that means is if for some reason the resistance increases, then the flow of blood would reduce in our body. For example, if we have arteriosclerosis or if we have sympathetic system that got triggered. So if the resistance increases, flow of blood would reduce. That would also mean nutritional needs will become a problem because nutrition would reduce. On the other hand, if re resistance increases, that would reduce the flow. Sorry, if res resistance reduces, then the flow would increase. Now, do you want to keep increasing flow to the point that the blood is just going very fast? No, you also do not want. Too much flow would also cause a problem with the nutritional aspects because the blood is passing so fast that the tissue cannot pick up the nutritional things. The fish is going so fast that you cannot fish it. So, this is the utility of the resistance today. So, let's look at it. The various factors that affect the resistance are according to the Poiseuille, the Poiseuille's equation are following. Look, if you double the viscosity, then the resistance will double. That is a direct relationship. So resistance is directly proportional to the viscosity. Similarly, resistance is directly proportional to the length. So if you double the length of a tube, then the resistance will become double as well. However, resistance is inversely proportional to the fourth power of the radius. That means if you halve the radius, if you reduce the radius of a vessel to half, you have to make fourth power of it. That would mean resistance would increase. Reducing the diameter would increase the resistance by 16 times. And if you double the diameter, then the re resistance would reduce by 16 times. So you can, you can understand this then. 8 is not an important number here. Length is not important for cardiovascular system. Why? Because normally our length of the blood vessels do not change. They don't reduce or increase in normal conditions. Yes, they can be accidents, but in normal conditions, the length is not going to change. The radius is changing and the viscosity is changing. So let's see now. We have established what happens with that. Let's see how the viscosity is changed. Viscosity can change by change in hematocrit. Hematocrit in a normal adult is from between 40 to 50, depending upon the person and, and the gender and so on. What is hematocrit? Hematocrit is the 99% is the RBCs. Then it is the proteins and the other blood, blood cells. So it is the particulate matter, the solids inside the plasma make up the hematocrit. Can we increase the hematocrit? Yes. There are many diseases that cause the hematocrit to go up. For example, if there is a bone marrow cancer, that causes the bone marrow to throw out a lots of blood cells. That would increase the hematocrit. How about the multiple myeloma? How about the hyperproteinemia? That there is, a, there is cancer of the B cell and that B cell is producing a lots of immunoglobulins. Immunoglobulins are proteins. When they come in the plasma, they increase the hematocrit. How about in physiological condition, not pathological condition, a person doesn't drink enough water or is going through the uh, desert and is losing water. So then the relative hematocrit would increase. When the hematocrit will increase, that means increasing viscosity. That means increasing resistance. That means increased resistance would reduce flow. So patient who has a higher hematocrit would have reduced blood flow. Okay. How about reducing the hematocrit? Anemias. If the number of RBCs is reduced because of anemias of various types or if the patient has a problem with the proteins, the result is that the hematocrit would go down. When the hematocrit would go down, the viscosity will reduce. That will mean resistance will reduce. That means flow would increase. So flow and pressures both increase. Now what happens with when the flow increases? Is that a good thing? Yeah, up to an extent. But 
if flow increases too much that creates the eddy current so there are two or three problems one is those eddy currents cause pressure and they hit the blood vessels and they damage the blood vessel walls you can actually hear the eddy currents inside the heart are called murmurs murmurs are nothing but the turbulent flow or the eddy currents and when you have eddy currents due to anemia or any other reason that hematic current has gone down in a blood vessel, maybe carotid or maybe aorta, then you would hear bruids. You put the stethoscope on the carotids or on the aorta and you hear brui, you have an eddy current going. And what is the problem there? That is hematic rate may be low or some for some reason the flow has increased. Now, how about the diameter? So see, diameter has inverse relationship and a large inverse relationship. So you must understand the diameter changes and the effect on the flow and the blood pressure. What happens is we control our diameter all the time physiologically or it happens pathologically as well. Our atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis are very common problems that occur with age that cause the hypertension hypertension then cause the cardiac problems and these are one of the most common problems that you would encounter inside the united states actually worldwide so as a doctor it is really important that you just listen to these five ten sentences carefully and write it down because throughout your life other than cancers and the cerebral problems cardiac problems and cardiovascular problems are the ones that you will be handling and treating and these are very treatable problems so diameter I have made two blood vessels over here. Now remember this, that the fourth diameter arterioles are the most important blood vessels to, to look at. Arterioles have, they are called the resistance vessels of the cardiovascular system. They are also called the functional sphincters of the cardiovascular system. What they do is that they are supplied by the sympathetic and parasympathetic innervation and their smooth muscles can contract or dilate to reduce or change the diameter. Now how does that change in diameter occur? Let's look at a smooth muscle here on a GIT renal or skin blood vessel. Here it is, it is um, supported by alpha-1 adrenergic receptors. What happens with the alpha-1 adrenergic receptor is that when sympathetic supply stimulates them, that causes the alpha-1 receptor to be stimulated. That causes IP3 and di diacylglycerol DAG to increase. That increases the calcium inside the smooth muscle and the smooth muscle contracts. So what happens is with the sympathetic supply, the smooth muscles would contract, the diameter would reduce. Reduced diameter will mean increased resistance, that would mean reduced flow. Now the same sympathetic innervation, when it affects the arterioles, when it acts on the arterioles of the skeletal muscles, which have beta 2 adrenergic receptors, then what happens is that we, their site second messenger system is cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP, when that increases, that causes the contraction to be blocked. So muscle becomes relaxed, smooth muscle becomes relaxed. When the smooth muscles are relaxed, what would that do? That would increase the diameter. Increased diameter will mean what? Increased diameter, reduced resistance, reduced resistance would mean increased flow. So the flow, when there is sympathetic innervation, then the flow to the muscles is increased and flow of the blood to the skin, GIT and renal and such other tissues is reduced. Why? Because sympathetic system was preparing you for fight, flight or fright. So let's say you see a lion. Do you want to run or not? Yes, you want to run instead of pooping, right? So to run, you need the blood flow to go to your muscles and for that you want the, the arterioles to the muscles to be dilated. So that is the importance of it. You would also see in hypertension, what happens is that the arterioles of the arteries constrict and that causes hypertension. Hypertension will then fail the heart if you are not controlling it. So these are the most common problems you will see and the problems are caused here and equation is the Pauzier's equation. Thank you very much.